Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay Huang. Today, we are going to talk about liver tumors using Kurtz Notes. If you already haven't been, please check out Kurtz Notes' website. He has his famous Kurtz Notes, as well as other invaluable resources, including comments, uh, diagnostic sign-out comments, quizzes, and about me section, articles, and books. And recently, there's been a scientific article about the impact Kurtz Notes has had for surgical pathologists and residents alike. So I would recommend you reading that if you have time. And without further ado, let's talk about hepatocellular lesions. All of these lesions stain with hepatocellular stains, including HEPAR1 and arginase. Also, there is cannulicular staining with CD10 and PCEA, as well as cytoplasmic TTF1, of note, negative for Mach 31. That's very important in differentiating biliary uh, lesions, which we will talk about shortly after. Macro regenerative nodule. This is an unusually large regenerative nodule, often greater than a centimeter, that develops in the setting of cirrhosis. This is hyperplastic liver parenchyma. Plates may be slightly thickened. Usually it's one to two cells thick and maybe focally three. It has normal constituents, including bile ducts, arteries, veins, etc. There is no atypia unless dysplastic. Focal nodular hyperplasia. This is not a true neoplasm, and it looks from gross picture as well as microscopically like focal cirrhosis. This is, in fact, a regenerative hyperplastic response of hepatocytes, secondary to vascular abnormalities. It's very common. And grossly, you'll see a well-circumscribed mass with central stellate scar, as you can see here, with fibrous septae, with entrapped vessels, bile ducts, and inflammatory cells. There will be normal plate thickness and no true portal tracts. If you stain with glutamine synthetase, it will have this characteristic map-like or geographic staining, as you can see here, where this glutamine synthetase, glutamine synthetase IHC this is normal pericentral staining, and then here you have this strong geographic or map-like staining. And note, in cirrhosis, it shows weak, patchy, periceptal staining. Hepatocellular adenoma. This is a benign liver neoplasm associated with oral contraceptives and steroids. There is risk of transformation to hepatocellular carcinoma and or bleeding and rupture. Histologically, there are benign appearing hepatocytes without significant atypia. There is normal plate thickness around one to cell, two cells thick. You'll have unpaired arteries and absent bile ducts, and you should not have any mitoses. Histologically, here we see normal liver parenchyma, and here we have your hepatocellular adenoma where you have these unpaired arteries. There are four subtypes. The most common is inflammatory slash telangiectatic, which makes up around 45% of your hepatocellular adenoma. It stains with serum amyloid A and CRP, and you'll have associated inflammatory infiltrate, peliosis, and bioductular reaction in fibroceptae. Transformation to hepatocellular carcinoma can occur. There is beta-catenin activated, which makes around 15% of your hepatocellular adenoma, and this has nuclear beta-catenin, although focal. You'll have diffuse, strong glutamine synthetase, and this has the highest risk of malignant transformation to hepatocellular carcinoma. Next up, you have your HNF1-alpha inactivated, which makes up around 30% of your hepatocellular adenomas. You'll have loss of LFABP staining, and it's associated with adenomatosis, where you'll have greater than 10 adenomas, and this has a very low risk of transformation. Lastly, there is unclassified, which makes around 10%, and this is none of the above. Let's talk about hepatocellular lesions. Hepatocellular carcinoma. This is a malignant tumor with hepatocellular differentiation, and it often occurs in the setting of cirrhosis, which is associated with chronic liver damage, such as viral hepatitis, alcohol, and NASH, or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. The diagnosis is often made clinically with radiology and increased AFP. Is treated often with embolization, resection, or transplant. Histologically, you'll have widening of hepatic plates, greater than two cells thick. You'll have absent portal tracts, often unpaired arteries, and the architecture and cytologic atypia varies and includes pseudoacini, pseudogland formation, as you can see here, and wide trabeculae. 
often there is bile production by the tumor cells. And on cytology, what's classical to see in HCC is endothelial wrapping. Staining wise, if you get a reticulin, as you can see here, you'll see widening of your hepatic plates. CD34, you'll have this diffuse sinusoidal pattern or capillarization. And glipican 3 can be positive or negative, but it is negative in benign liver and the positive staining supports malignancy. Variants include fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma. Your general demographics are young non serotic patients. You'll have normal AFP. It's often large, solitary. Histologically, you'll have large oncocytic tumor cells with bands of lamellar fibrosis. You'll have cytoplasmic pale bodies and recurrent DNA JB1 PRKACA translocation. And it stains with CD68 and CK7. And it's classically thought to be a better prognosis, but this is likely mostly due to demographics, these patients being younger and non serotic patients generally. Then you have your steatohepatitic hepatocellular carcinoma. This is associated with hepatitis C with NASH. You'll have histologically macrovesicular steatosis, ballooning degeneration, Mallory Denk bodies, and it can be hard to recognize on biopsy, especially if there is background NASH, where there is background steatohepatitis. Macrotrabecular massive hepatocellular carcinoma. You'll have thick trabeculae coated by endothelial cells and surrounded by vascular space. This is an aggressive subtype with high AFP and TP53 mutations or FGF19 amplification. Hepatoblastoma. This is the most common liver tumor in children. It's malignant and associated with Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. Hepatoblastoma shows histologically a variety of of epithelial patterns, including, as you can see here, this fetal pattern and embryonal pattern, as well as mesenchymal cell types, these teratoid, quote unquote, recapitulating hepatic ontogenesis. You'll often have frequent beta catenin mutations, and if you do a beta catenin IHC and there is nuclear staining slash localization, that portends a worse prognosis. Biliary lesions. The epithelium in all of these biliary lesions stain with CK7, CK19, and Mach31, among other stains. As you may recall, hepatocellular lesions are negative for Mach31. These lesions are negative for hepatocellular stains, HEPAR1, arginase, and glipcan 3 Bile duct adenoma. This is a benign bile duct proliferation. It's usually less than one centimeter subcapsular and well circumscribed. You'll have small, uniform, small ducts with cuboidal cells and regular nuclei. For biliary adenofibroma, it has more complex epithelial growth with abundant fibroblastic stromal components. And clinically, you may, mis may mistake intraoperatively when, you when they send a frozen for a metastasis. Bile duct hamartoma, aka von Meyenberg complex. This is also benign, it may be multiple, and it's usually small, around several millimeters, and histologically, you'll have these irregular to round dilated bile ducts, and it's associated with hyalinized slash fibrostroma. The lumens can contain bile, and it can be inspissated and proteinaceous material. Now, your bile duct adenoma and bile duct hamartoma be given to you intraoperatively on frozens and in a patient with pancreatic cancer who is undergoing a Whipple. And this is a dilemma for pathologists because if the frozen is metastatic pancreatic cancer, then they'll abort the Whipple. But if it is a bile duct adenoma and bile duct hamartoma, then they'll continue on with the Whipple. And so it's very important for us to distinguish bile duct adenoma, bile duct hamartoma from pancreatic adenocarcinoma. One tip my staff has told me is this interface. Usually bile duct adenoma and bile duct hamartoma will, will respect the adjacent hepatocytes, whereas pancreatic adenocarcinoma won't respect and will be infiltrated. Cholangiocarcinoma. This is adenocarcinoma arising from intrahepatic bile ducts. Inflammatory disorders can predispose you to cholangiocarcinoma, including primary sclerosing cholangitis, or PSC, or liver fluke infection, and you must clinically distinguish from metastasis. Architecturally, usually it's a tubular pattern. Sometimes you'll see large ducts. There's often a sclerotic center, and there's a nonspecific IHC profile, but positive albumin in situ hybridization supports intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. 
then you have your combined hepatocellular cholangiocarcinoma. This is a single tumor with morphologically distinct areas of hepatocellular carcinoma, where that region will be arginates and hepar positive, and then another region that's cholangiocarcinoma, and that will be CK7 positive. And the, it's treated, and the prognosis is similar to cholangiocarcinoma. Thus, the prognosis is worse than hepatocellular carcinoma, and no transplantation is done. Additional diagnosis include intraductal papillary neoplasm. It's similar to your intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasms or IPMNs in the pancreatic duct, and it can progress to cholangiocarcinoma. Then your mucinous cystic neoplasms, just like in the pancreas, and yes, you can have them in the liver as well. And yes, cytologically, you'll see this ovarian type stroma surrounding the mucinous epithelium, but it's in the liver. Vascular lesion. Note all of these lesions stain with endothelial markers, including CD31, ERG, and FLY1. Cavernous hemangioma. This is the most common benign tumor of the liver. It's thought to be malformations and non-neoplastic. It's often asymptomatic and diagnosed radiographically. It's more common in females. You'll have fibrous septae lined by a single layer of flat endothelial cells. It can thrombose and calcify. Epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. This is an endothelial tumor of low-grade malignancy. You'll have eosinophilic, slightly epithelioid cells with signet ring-like features representing intracytoplasmic lumina and it can often contain red blood cells, and some people call these blister cells. It's associated with a dense fibrous stroma, and often you'll have intravascular papillary growth and infiltrative sinusoidal spaces at the edge of the lesion, and it has a characteristic translocation, WWTR1 CAMTA1 fusion, and sometimes focally positive for cytokeratins by IHC, hence also the term epithelioid. Angiosarcoma. This is a malignant endothelial tumor. It's the most common liver sarcoma. You'll have histologically spindled to epithelioid cells, and there will be variably atypical endothelial cells with multilayering and mitoses, as you can see here. There will be anastomosing spaces, and it's likely to grow along pre-existing vascular spaces. It's usually large and or multifocal and associated with exposure to vinyl chloride. Embryonal sarcoma. This is a malignant tumor composed of undifferentiated mesenchymal cells, usually in older children. You'll have loose mixoid stroma with immature and giant cells. You'll have this characteristic eosinophilic intracellular hyaline globules. It can rupture. Uh, previously, bad prognosis, but it is improving. Thank you again, Dr. Shabrick, for these excellent notes. And before we finish, let's do our rapid fire review. Hepatocellular lesions, all stained with HEPAR1 arginase, cannulicular staining with CD10 PCEA, cytoplasmic TTF1, and negative Mach31. Macro regenerative nodule, often in the setting of cirrhosis. It's hyperplastic liver parenchyma, and you'll have normal constituents, bile ducts, arteries, veins, without a tip, unless it is dysplastic. Focal nodular hyperplasia, not a true neoplasm. It looks like focal cirrhosis, and it's secondary to vascular abnormalities. Grossly, you'll see the central stellate scar. With glutamine synthetase IHC, you'll have this map-like or geographic staining. Hepatocellular adenoma, benign liver neoplasm. There is risk of transformation to hepatocellular carcinoma and or bleeding or rupture. You'll have normal plate thickness, unpaired arteries, and absent bile ducts. Four main subtypes, inflammatory telangiotatic, beta-catenin activated, HNF1 alpha inactivated, and unclassified. Hepatocellular lesions, hepatocellular carcinoma. This is a malignant tumor often in the setting of cirrhosis. You'll have widening of hepatocytes. You'll have widening of hepatic plates greater than two cells thick, which you can see better with reticulin staining. CD34 will show diffuse sinusoidal staining, and glipocan 3 will be positive slash negative, but it will be negative in benign liver, and positive staining supports malignancy. Variants include fibrolamellar HCC. It's an often in young non cirrhotic patients and stains with CD68 and CK7 steatohepatitic HCC, and macrotrabecular massive HCC. Hepatoblastoma, most common liver tumor in children. It's malignant and associated with Beckwith-Wiedemann. Biliary lesions, all stained with CK7 
the epithelium in, this, in these lesions, the epithelium in all of these lesions stained with CK7, CK19, MOC31, and negative for HEPAR1 arginase glipicanthary. Bile duct adenoma, benign bile duct proliferation, usually less than a centimeter, subcapsular, and well circumscribed. Bile duct hamartoma, aka von Meinberg complex, you'll have it is benign. You'll have irregular to round bile dilated. You'll have irregular to round dilated bile ducts. It's associated with fibrous hyalinized stroma. Lumens contain bile. Cholangeal carcinoma, adenocarcinoma arising from intrahepatic bile ducts must clinically distinguish from metastasis. There is, is a combined hepatocellular cholangeal carcinoma, and it's treated, and the prognosis is similar to cholangeal carcinoma. Introductal papillary neoplasm, similar to your IPMNs in the pancreatic duct. It can progress to cholangeal carcinoma. Mucinous cystic neoplasm, just like in the pancreas with your ovarian type stroma. Vascular lesions, stains for C31, ERG, and FLY1. Cavernous hermangioma, most common benign tumor of the liver, often asymptomatic and diagnosed radiographically. Epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, endothelial tumor of low-grade malignancy with signet ring-like features representing intracytoplasmic lumina, your blister cells, and often contain red blood cells. Translocation, WWTR1, CAMTA1 fusion. Angiosarcoma, malignant endothelial tumor, Variably atypical endothelial cells with multilayering and mitoses, usually large and or multifocal, poor prognosis. Picoma, angiomyolipoma, benign tumors just like in the kidney. Think of this if you see fat. Embryonal sarcoma, malignant tumor with undifferentiated mesenchymal cells, usually in older children. You'll have characteristic eosinophilic intracellular hyaline globules. Thank you again so much for listening in to Pathagonia using Kurt's notes. We'll catch you on the next episode of Pathagonia. Bye.